911, state your emergency. There's an accident at the, at the Parker High School football field. Are there any injuries? Yes, the, there's a body laying on the ground, and there's still some people in the car. I don't think they can get out. Okay, how many vehicles are involved? There are two cars. Okay, help is on the way. Okay. Station 11, ambulance 625. Injury traffic accident, Corcoran High School football field, possible pin in with one victim ejected. County Fire Engine 11, Squad 11, Ambulance 625 responding. Copy units responding. In Entry traffic accident, Corcoran High School football field, possible pin in with one victim ejected. Nico. Nico. Nico, get up! Please! Smell a little bit of alcohol in your breath. How much have you had to drink today? A few. A few? Okay. You injured? You okay? Okay, let's go over here. The car's smoking, okay? together for me, okay? I'm gonna do a field sobriety test on you, understand? Okay, because I smell a little bit of alcohol in your breath, you understand? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna explain it to you. I want you to pour, pour, or perform it back, you understand? <laughs> Go ahead, left. Right. Take the thumb of your finger to your index fingers. Count out loud. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. It's stuck. Are you hurt? Okay, we'll be here to help you in a minute. Four, two, two, one, two. The one on the ground is fatal. This one can't feel her legs. He's unconscious. Like, this is our major injury. Okay. We're going to go ahead and start cutting him out. All right. I'm going to talk to you the side cut. Okay. Hey, what, you, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you go over to my car, okay? Let's go over to my car over here. What's your name? ETA for the helicopter is 13 minutes. 13 minutes. All right. Our battalion chief will be landing him. Let's go ahead and uh, start C spotting this guy here, uh, and we're going to get him extricated first. Okay. Do you hurt anywhere? <laughs> My leg is stuck. Okay. Your leg stuck? Okay. Just hold tight, okay? All right, go ahead and lean against my car. I don't want you to fall, okay? Just go ahead and put your butt against my car. Where's the pain at right now? Oh, my, my chicken. I can't feel my leg. Can't feel your legs? Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get you out of here, all right? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get you something on your back, stabilize your back, all right? Okay. Watch out. Okay. 
put your mouth around the straw and blow all the way out until I tell you to stop, okay? Go ahead and begin. Okay. What you need to do is put your hands behind your back, okay? Being placed under arrest for DUI and being for manslaughter, okay? This way. Alright, go ahead and have a seat.
uh, initial GCS was about 10, his GCS continues to climb. All right, let's check a pulse. Um, at this point, I think we're going to discontinue if anybody has any objections of discontinuing CPR. No? Okay. Family available? Um, not yet. Okay. okay All right. Let's clean them up. I was just wondering if you guys understand what had happened or what you guys know so far. You know what we just got we just got caught up what we were doing and we, just, we were just told to come here quick. Okay. Um, unfortunately, your son was in a car accident. Um, he was just brought in about uh, 20 minutes ago, and uh, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, he did pass. Um, we tried to uh, write in a code multiple times, and uh, it just was not successful. I'm very sorry for your loss. <laughs> Let <me> go.
my name is Dr. Nerio. What do we got here? It's a 17-year-old female. Uh, she was in an MBA at okay. collision. Uh, positive uh, deficits in her lower extremities. Okay. Uh, uh, currently, uh, also uh, bodies are stable. Okay. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, the only complaint is still the deficits. Okay. Uh, Can you squeeze my fingers? Good. Can you feel me touching them? Yeah. Okay. Oops. No history, no allergies, no medications or anything. Good strong fetal pulses. Can you feel me touch your toes? How about the other side? No? Nope. Okay. Can you push against my hands? Um, all right, hon. Hi, Mom. Dr. Hi. Naria. Um, do you understand what's been going on or what information do you have so far? Uh, just, she was in an accident. Okay. I'm not, not sure what happened. Okay, so she was just recently brought in. We did a, a full exam. Um, unfortunately, the driver of the car did pass, um, but uh, your daughter seems to be uh, paralyzed uh, from the waist down. Um, she has no movement, she's unable to feel, so loss of sensation. She still has pulses, so we're thinking that she's still um, uh, hemodynamically intact, but she's unable to move or feel her from the waist down. Um, any questions? Can Do I see her? Please, yes, more than welcome. I'm right here, baby. You'll be okay. Mom's right here. Um, do you understand what has happened, or do you know what's going on? I was just so told that my daughter was in an accident. Okay. Know. Okay, so uh, what had happened is she was in a motor vehicle accident. She just came in about 15 minutes ago. Um, good news is that it looks like she just sustained some minor injuries, some lacerations and contusions of the head. Um, we'll do some further tests, but uh, overall she looks uh, fairly stable. Okay. Okay, would you like to yes. see her? Sure. driving and then the car just swerved in front of us and I don't know what happened. Lily said she couldn't feel her legs and all her wasn't moving. I'll see if I can find anything out but as long as you're okay, you're right? I know that I shouldn't have drank and driven and I don't want you to come to help me. I want you to to leave the situation the way it is and let me live with what I've done. I'm sorry. And I live with you. Yes, I'm here. I told me to identify. 
Bobby, my daughter. Your daughter? Alondra Renegness. Good afternoon, Mr. Ramirez. You can have a seat, please. And now is the time and the place for sentencing. Are the people ready to proceed? People are ready. Ms. Lizzie, is the defense ready to proceed? Defense is ready. Way to ring for judgment, no legal call? Yes. Right, uh, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Ramirez, you are here for uh, sentencing for the second degree murder of Nicholas uh, Obregon, the second degree murder of Alejandro Fernandez for driving while under the influence causing injury in violation of view of Code Section 2153, and for uh, causing uh, permanent paralysis to Eileen Navarez and a great bodily injury to Leah Holguin. Uh, with that, I have uh, reviewed the probation officer's report and recommendation as well as the circumstances of the offense. Mr. Fagundes, do you have any victims uh, or victims' family which, who wish to give an impact statement? Yes, Your Honor, we have one. All right. Uh, is it the uh, mother of Ms. Hogan? Yes. Hey, ma'am, will you please come forward, come up to the podium there, and state your name for me. Hello, Your Honor. Good afternoon. My you want to address the court? Hello. My name is Paula Lefman, and I am Leah Hogan's mom. And I didn't know what I was going to say today. Um, our family and our whole life has been turned upside down by this accident. The, the night I got that phone call about Leah and Eileen and the deaths of her two friends, it's not something, I mean, I don't know. I just, I've known this young man for a really long time. I've watched him play sports. He grew up with Leah. And now his life is in your hands and his future and I just, as much pain as he's caused all of our families, I want the maximum sentence for him. Thank you, Ms. Lefkin. Mr. Fugundes, do you have any other victim impact statements? Not to my knowledge, Your Honor. Hi, Ms. Uh, Lizenby, does the defendant wish to make a statement in allocution, or does he want to waive that and proceed to sentencing? 
He would like to waive that and proceed to sentencing. All right, would the defense like to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. You may be heard. Your Honor, this is a very serious case, and my client understands just how serious this is. We have the loss of two lives and two people that were injured. The things that the court, we would like the court to consider are how old this defendant is. He's 18 years old, he's young, he's just starting out his life. He's accepted responsibility at an early stage of proceedings as he understands the, the mistake and decisions that he's made. Not only are the lives of two people over, um, Ms. Mr. Obrega, Obrega and Ms. Fernandez, Ms. Navarez is paralyzed. And the defendant, my client, Mr. Ramirez, his life will never be the same either. Mr. Ramirez will never get over what he has done to his friends. He will live with this, he will live with the guilt the rest of his life, and the guilt that he currently feels is overwhelming. Mr. Ramirez is deeply apologetic to all of his victims. He's deeply apologetic to their families, and he feels extreme remorse for the actions. Mr. Ramirez made a mistake. Um, he did not have the intent to kill anybody that night, nor did he have the intent to injure anybody. Um, he unfortunately was driving a vehicle when everybody had been drinking and made, made a split decision to do something that would affect many lives forever, including his own. We would ask the court to consider that um, based on his age, his lack of criminal history, his deep remorse for what he's done, and accepting responsibility, we would ask the court to consider that in sentencing him and give him leniency. Thank you, Ms. Lizenby. Mr. Fagundes, would the people like to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, as we sit here today, Mr. Ramirez is asking for leniency of the court, but yet Nicolar, Alejandra, Eileen, and Leah don't have an opportunity to ask for leniency. They are stuck with the fate that Mr. Ramirez gave them. They are stuck with the choices that they might have in the future being taken away from them. And Nicolar and Alejandra will never experience their own graduation. They will never experience a wedding. They will never experience things with their parents that every child should be able to experience. What we have is a situation where it is true, everybody may have been drinking that night, but it is the defendant who chose to drive. It is all about his bad choices. This is not a circumstance where we wonder about whether somebody will die, but it's, it's, it's who will die because every 15 minutes in this country, somebody dies from a DUI collision and a poor choice of a drunk driver. Every 15 minutes in this country, somebody decides to be selfish and unrelenting on the consequences that they leave behind. Drunk drivers leave a wide swath of pain and grief in the lives of so many people other than just even those who are murdered by his conduct. It's appalling to me the defendant asks for leniency as he sits here today, citing his youthful age, and trying to blame the victims in this case. The victims have done no wrong. It is the defendant who made the choices. It is the defendant who ruined lives, and not just those whom he murdered, but those whom he's maimed and paralyzed. Your Honor, in this case, he doesn't have to intend to murder. He simply has to intend to do conduct that is so dangerous and reckless and harmful to human life that he did not care about its safety. And so, that having that standard in mind, the defendant clearly committed second-degree murder in two counts. He committed felony dr drunk driving with injury and causing great bodily injury, albeit paralysis, which increases the penalty. With that, Your Honor, we are standing here. The only just sentence, even giving leniency in this case, the court is, we are arguing, is duty-bound to impose 15 to life for each life that he took and an additional three years for felony drunk driving, and at least in another five years for the paralysis and the life sentence that he's handed down to the victim in this case. So with that, we would be asking for minimum of eight years in prison plus 30 years to life before the defendant can even ask for a parole hearing. With that, we would submit it to the court. I believe Mr. Fabin is that uh he's not eligible because of the GDI allegations for the uh multiple victim uh, enhancement, correct? Correct. 
However, there's the five year for the paralysis. Is there not also a three years for the uh, permanent scarring uh, uh, that Ms. Holguin has suffered? So it would make it uh, 41 years to life. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. I stand corrected. I forgot about the, the additional three years. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, I would note that uh, Mr. Fagundes is correct. In the state of California, uh, the standard is, is uh, does not require an intent to kill. I do not, uh, for one moment, believe that Mr. Ramirez intended to kill anyone. I don't believe that he intended to harm anyone. Uh, but as Mr. Fagundes has pointed out, in the state of California, the intent for a second-degree murder <clears throat> is simply that uh, person acts with a callous indifference to human life. And in modern society, with social media as it is, and high schoolers perpetually connected to each other through social media, and the posting of each other drinking at parties and intoxicated, uh, <clears throat> and the constant uh, bombardment from the news media uh, about fatal DUI accidents that we see on the evening news, Every holiday, Mothers Against Drunk Driving produced numerous commercials showing some poor man, woman, or child that no longer has their family because they were killed by a drunk driver. The schools provide DARE programs and sober grad programs and driver education classes, all of which emphasize the dangers of driving while under the influence of alcohol or a drug or the combination of the two. In this modern era, it is inconceivable to me that the defendant would not understand the danger he created when he chose to drink and drive. Drinking until you're under the influence, getting into a car, which is simply several thousand pounds of steel, and then speeding on a public roadway can only be characterized as a callous indifference and disregard for human life. In California, the purpose of sentencing is to achieve justice. Justice requires consequences appropriate to first the defendant, the criminal conduct that they engaged in, and the harm that they have caused both to the individual and to society as a whole. Every decision we make in life, Mr. Ramirez, has a consequence. Some are positive, some are negative. But every decision has a consequence. Had you chosen to drink and then called a cab or an Uber or a Lyft or whatever means to get home, the consequences of your underage drinking would have been a few dollars or a tipsy taxi home. Had you chosen to call a parent and request a ride home, consequence might have been loss of a car for a couple of weeks or might have been grounded for a week or two. Had you chosen to call a sober friend, the consequence might have simply been the inconvenience of a friend coming to help you out. That isn't what you chose. You chose to drink and then you chose to drive. Apparently those other minor consequences were unacceptable to you. That was too much of an inconvenience. Instead, the consequences of your decision to drink and then die, drive was the death of Nicholas Obregón and the death of Alejandro Fernandez. It was paralyzing Eileen Navarez. And it was permanently scarring Leo Hogi. You are young. I understand that this doesn't mean he may not have a prior record. However, I am cognizant that prison uh, <clears throat> for the defendant would mean he will not be joining the military and he won't be becoming a paramedic where he could actually help people, help people that are in the similar circumstances that he caused for his victims in this case. However, his victims also were young. He also did not have a record. Nicholas and Alejandro will not be attending college. They won't be marrying anybody. They won't be having children. They won't be raising a family. They will no longer feel the sun on a warm spring day. Eileen of Arms will be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. For her, there is no probation. There is no parole. It is a life sentence inflicted by you without due process. 
Leah Hogan, with her facial lacerations, will be reminded of that afternoon every day for the rest of her life, every time she looks in a mirror. She will be reminded of the friends she lost because you chose to drink and drive. Leniency for Mr. Ramirez, but allow him to live the very life that he has forever taken away from his victims in this case. I cannot find that that would be justice. I cannot find that that would be consequences appropriate to your conduct. That those would be consequences appropriate to the decisions that you have made. Mr. Ramirez, stand. For the second degree murder of Nicholas Oregon in count one, I sentence you to 15 years to life in the California Department of Corrections. For the second degree murder of Alejandro Fernandez, I sentence you to a consecutive term of 15 years to life in the California Department of Corrections. For count three, the violation of driving while under the influence causing injury, I sentence you to a consecutive term of three years in the California Department of Corrections. For the great bodily injury causing paralysis to Eileen Navarro's, I add an additional five years. And for the permanent lacerations to the facial area of Leah Hogan, I sent you to additional three years. Those consecutive sentences mean you will serve 41 years to life in the California Department of Corrections. You will serve 41 calendar years before you may ask the Department of Corrections to schedule a parole hearing. You, sir, will be 59 years old before you can ask for a parole hearing. You will be my age by the time you have that opportunity. At this time, you're remanded to California Department of Corrections at Wasco State Prison to serve out your term. Please remove the prisoner. With that, court is adjourned. Thank you.